Okay, we're getting ready to do a walkthrough in Greenhouse One. We have an employee, Stormy, uh, doing something she hates to do. She's a country girl, but she can't take any bad smells, and there's dead fish smell, and so she's already gagging. It's going to be an interesting uh, day for her. Uh, she's already had to carry a big bucket of dead fish out uh, to feed to the local buzzards. Uh, in aquaculture today, there are a couple uh, may, uh, new terms that are really popular. One is RAS, standing for Recirculating Aquaculture System, which is what we have here. And the other is CE for uh, Circular Economy, which means that you recycle everything. So we are... Uh, attempting to recycle these dead fish. Our dogs are eating some of them, but they can't possibly eat all of them. I thought about freezing them, and, but it would be a year supply. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and, and feed the local buzzards. Uh, we have two species, uh, black vultures and, and turkey vultures, and uh, they're already gathering around one bucket of fish we dumped out. I'm sure the crows and uh, Mexican eagles will come and get their share too. It's going to be interesting to see how many they gather for this. Okay, we're going into greenhouse one. Uh, that, that stormy, uh, I guess she's going out to get fresh air. <laughs> Let's look at the breeding bats first. This normally is not underwater up here at the front, uh, but we have been running large amounts of well water in at 73 degrees in order to, to help the heaters. Today, yesterday, the uh, water temperature came up to almost 70. Uh, the current air temperature in here, according to that thermometer behind Carl, is 95. And that's what happens in the sun. It'll be up around 110 this, this afternoon, which will help uh, raise the water more. We have a cool night coming up uh, as another front comes in. So uh, we want to run the temperature up as much as we can. Uh, on this walkway, you can see we haven't been doing routine maintenance, which would have stopped uh, these vats from overflowing. But at this point, we just don't care. The leaves on the ground are falling off these uh, Oja Santa plants because which are part of our recirculating, our RAS system and plant filtration system uh, because uh, the, we couldn't keep carbon monoxide levels down. We have a carbon monoxide uh, detector behind Carl and I would come out several times a night while we're running the heaters, the propane heaters, not all of which were rated for uh, indoor use and whenever the carbon monoxide went up uh, set off the alarm I would turn off the heaters for a while at, uh, and increase ventilation uh, so it's kind of a battle between trying to keep temperature up and keep toxic gases down keep oxygen levels up so we're gonna have to come through and pick up all these leaves at some point uh, the main thing today is uh, uh, getting dead fish out so that our ammonia levels don't spike although our plant system is pretty robust it also has been hit as you can tell the aretums dropped a bunch of leaves okay uh yeah. i didn't do a mic check let's do a quick pause so I okay can the mic okay uh, all right we're back from the mic check go for it okay i'm starting to walk down i'm going to pick up some fish although we've got stormy and uh that's dead swordtail we polyculture some live bearers with our cichlids and red sword tails seem to do really well and I'm assuming that they provide some red pigments for uh, fish. Uh, I only see one dead fish in here but I don't see any live ones and there should be about 50. They may be hiding or they may just be stuck and dead. Uh, these are some mollies that we were polyculturing with the cichlids. Again, I don't see I see a bunch of young cichlids back there that are alive. So far the dead fish in this one are, uh, are mollies. Uh, I was kind of surprised in the other greenhouses, uh, which is mostly live bearers, I was going through, and it looks like we lost all of our breeder, Xenotaca isonese uh, Rio Tomazula, which is also known as 
uh, Xenotaka uh, lion disease, named after a researcher named Lion. Uh, and they are from the central plateau of Mexico, which is, uh, gets pretty cold. And in fact, uh, I had a friend who raised uh, Xenotakas and other Gadeids. There are about 45 species of them uh, outdoors in in Arizona, where it got pretty, you know had freezing nights. Okay, this unfortunately is a backup group of uh, blue marmalade Labiotrophus phlebarni, and I think we lost the breeding colony in the other greenhouse. So I'm hoping this is a vat of. of uh, uh, Vieja Maculata, Maculata, I can't remember right now, a little bit of phasic still from lack of sleep. Uh, that is a blue-green dolphin, it's a new color we're working on. Uh, that's a male, nice blue and green peacock with a hump on the head. At least we're selecting for that, if we have anybody left to select with. Okay, this is a peacock bat and uh, uh, gold OBs are one of the... And it looks like it was probably a complete loss. Uh, I see a live fish down there. There's three or four females swimming around. It looks like they're the younger ones. So it could be that the older fish were impacted more, although there's a, a juvenile dead. There's another young female. Yeah, and a bunch of guppies. Susie, are you leaving? Open the door so we can hear you. Is the door latched? Yeah, nice female Salvini that was dead in the gutter. There, uh, we had breeding populations, or had breeding populations of quite a few fish in the gutters and sumps. Uh, uh, convicts especially did well, but it looks like convicts especially took a big hit. Uh, so I, okay, here's another peacock, uh, gold peacock. Big breeder male dead. You can see some of the color he had, some blue and Red and gold. Females. Oh, there's one. Let's see if I can knock it loose. There's one under a cage. Let it float up. Yeah, I see some. We have some under cages. The main thing that we need to get done in the next couple days is get the bigger dead fish out, and that's going to be difficult in the sumps. I may have to go sump diving, which would be a little bit more pleasant when the water temperature goes up some. Dead juvenile. Guppies seem completely unimpacted. <coughs> okay, this is one of the Alonicaras. No, it's actually German Reds, which they're an Alonicara, but an aquarium strain. It's 
some dead, huh, a few dead guppies in here. Trying to unblock some of the Doesn't look quite as bad as the other greenhouse. This is uh, Undo Reef, uh, Alonicara Jacobe Freiburgi, Undo Reef. That's one of our breeder males. One of the, we just set these guys up, so that's a, a young male we were adding to the breeding colony. See another dead one down there. Picking up the cages to try to dislodge any. Uh, some of them aren't floating yet. Okay, this is Taiwan Reef, Protomalus species. looks fairly bad. A couple sword tails that we were polyculturing with them. I see some live ones down here, including what looks like a male, so that's good. But first assessment, this is a incredibly hard hit. I saw a fish, uh, yeah, that, yeah, it's live, but he's stressed badly. That's a, a Protomelus fenestratus, a tiger. Okay, this is an Abuna. The label fell off, and I don't have my chart with me, so I don't know which one is, they're too rotten to tell. Oh, that's nice. That's, those are actually uh, youngsters ready to harvest. This vat was scheduled to be done pretty shortly. Uh, this is sad. Big male uh, frontosa from Lake Tanganyika. Uh, I'm afraid we probably lost all of these, and we had s several hundred juveniles. just set this breeding colony up. So I don't have a label on it telling me how many are in it. Uh, that's interesting, this bat split. This is uh, an Mbuna. Uh, uh, I'm a phasic, still haven't caught up on sleep, although last night I didn't have to go out several times. So I'd, Got some sleep, but it takes apparently takes me more than one night to catch up. Uh, it's um, Crabro, Pseudotrophus Crabro, which is a really big Invena. The live ones in here. Uh, this is Pseudocara uh, morii, the wild dolphin cichlid. I can't tell if there's anybody in there or not. Uh, this is a uh, dragon blood. It's a mixture. We got some dragon bloods from a shop in California when I was out there speaking to some clubs in San Francisco and Los Angeles area. 
we stopped and picked up some and uh, they uh, they're some OBs, kind of an interesting fish I'm working with. We have several lines of dragon bloods now. Okay, let's see if I can get these guys and stop this. Overflow. When I go in for my annual physical, the doctor asks if I exercise uh, several times a week. And I tell her no. I prefer my exercise passive, and I get plenty of that in here, carrying uh, five gallon buckets full of water, 50 pound food bags, uh, clambering over vats. Netting them out is pretty strenuous work. When, and one of these days, assuming we get back into operation, we'll do a, a video of bre me breaking down one of these 300 gallon breeding vats and processing it. It's an interesting process. Nice big nail. Polystigma, Nimbochromus polystigma. Uh, we raise a lot of Nimbochromus uh, venustus. Polystigma is not a very reliable breeder for some reason. Okay, yeah, so he's got fungus and stuff. Uh, there'll be a lot of fish that are alive that won't won't make it. Let, I was reaching around there, clearing a overflow a little bit. These plants out of the way. Hornworts a really good. This is hornworts, Ratophyllum demersum. It's a really good plant for removing ammonia because it grows so incredibly fast. But it's kind of a pain. It clogs up the. A uh, big, it looks like it's probably a, a feral uh, protomelis. There are some alive in here. Oh, cool. This is uh, Libitochromus ceruleus, which ceruleus means in Latin blue. As you can tell, both males and females are yellow. Very popular fish. We just set this breeding colony up for spring. Uh, the reason it's named blue is that it apparently has a, bl a blue morph that's uh, in the wild, but that blue morph isn't in the hobby. Okay, blue dragon blood, that's the non-gold recessive gene in dragon bloods that leads to a gray body. This is uh, these are some dragon bloods, regular color. This is a um, red OB backups. Several dead in there, hard to tell. I'm afraid to go look at the vat that has our spectacular Red, uh, red OB peacock male. Okay, this doesn't look good. This is uh, uh, one of the Alonacara Stuart Grantes, Mabenji Blue. And it's like a lot of dead fish in here. Breeder male. Let's see. Find where our overflow is. Oh, here it is. Fish is stopping it up. More females. The 
some of the Alonicaras look a little bit more sensitive to temperature than some of the fish. Except for uh, some of the peacocks, interestingly enough, some of our OB peacocks got hit hard and others weren't hit as hard and they're all descended from the same group of fish I got from a Florida fish farm in 2003 uh, after yet another disaster, uh, Claudette, Hurricane Claudette wiped out our rainbow fish breeding colonies so and rainbow fish were getting a little less popular so we switched to cichlids and live bearers we we're already in the process of doing that that accelerated it okay this is I just set this bat up but I don't know what it is See a couple live fish at the bottom. This is another uh, peacock, uh, sky blue peacock. It's a non-OB selection from our sky blue OBs. Nice, the females are gold, or kind of silvery gold, and the males are a uh, nice sky blue color. Some of the females are gold issues, you can kill on those. Oops. Okay, if you're gonna get that out, Maya, eat it. This one doesn't look very good. What are you up to, Oso? Okay, that cinder block moved and y'all almost saw me take a dive into the vat. Wouldn't be the first time. Okay, Oso, out of my way. Okay, this is uh, another Alonicara aquarium strain, sunshine. We have a policy unless we've had the fish positively identified by reliable breeders, we consider them an aquarium strain and don't give them a scientific name. So this is a sunshine peacock, which is likely a, a good species of Alonicara, but it looks like we took a big hit on it. Uh, we would never sell them as the, any of the Lonicara species. That true, if a fish gets out into the sump and we catch it later, we never use it as a breeder for any uh, species. Uh, we keep those strictly separate. Uh, unlike a lot of, you know, the hobby has a couple, has an extreme group, I consider them extreme, that hates aquarium strains and uh, any hybrids. This is uh, Blue Empress, which is an aquarium strain, so we don't give it the name. We've selected for blue fish. That's a, not a breeding colony. It's a sail vet. I see fish swimming around the sump, but look at all the dead fish back there. I'm going to have to take a net and get out later. Okay, doggies, let's go the, down the next ro breeder row. And Stormy come by and pick up dead fish out of the gutters. I want to get them out of the vat so I know what's going on. After we get past this crisis, oops, 
I want to go walk around and look at that bat. That's our uh, a bunch of juvenile frontosas. takes frontosis forever to grow up and start breeding. Uh, here's a bunch of young Salvinis ready to sell as pears. That's a big male Salvini, wild one from the gutter. Convict female. Okay, what have we here? This is a uh, uh, Labiotrophus chihuahuasi red top blue uh, looks like we lost a bunch of them these are reserve breeders down in the gutter a big embryo of some sort can't tell from the color German reds doesn't look like too many of them dead in there. There's this one. This is Borlai, Copa the Cromus Borlai fish that we would be selling. It is two to three inches, some three to fours. Taiwan Reef. Party color peacocks. Looks like some are alive in there. Blue dragon blood youngsters. Okay. Sky blue peacock backup breeders and sailfish. Royal blue dolphins. Okay, here are some frontosas. Okay, I'm going to pull up the hotels and see. How are you coming along over there? Okay. All right. Have you gotten most of the fish out of the gutters? Okay, then come do it in this greenhouse. What? What? Uh, can you take a net and get stuff out of the uh, sump or not? Or if you can do it without falling in, okay. If you fall in and drown, we're going to drag you up in the pasture and let the buzzards eat you and say, well, no, what happened? She left here. Okay. I think your mother would agree with that. Didn't she say she was going to do that? If, you, if it, that she was going to drag you up and let the buzzers eat you? Yeah, I'm hoping there's some. Uh, that's an old label, so I don't know how many are in there. I think it was a hundred juveniles plus that dead male. And I didn't get that near that many out, so I'm hoping that they're just not s sitting dead on the bottom. Not quite sure why I'm wearing gloves. They're full of water. 
Okay, let's. I just. My move, I want to pick up that stuff. Let's get a different bucket and go down the next breeder bat row. Okay, dead Molly, a juvenile. This is uh, Freiburgi, uh, one of our breeder males. Normally uh, electric blue color. I saw some of these swimming la uh, last night. Okay, water temperature's up to, looks like 68 Fahrenheit. This is Protomelus tinealatus, red empress. And this is a species we keep pure. We have selections from it. One of our wild ancestress, and that's a Labiotrophus koalasi. Okay, this is one of our blue OB peacock breeding colonies. Looks like it took a hit. Although a couple nights ago with flashlight I saw live fish and I see youngsters in there swimming around. Uh, here's a breeder male. Colors are all faded out right now, but you can see what he was. Flows. Uh, we repurposed some of these vats from a different configuration, and so the overflows are in awkward positions sometimes. But like I say, it gives me exercise. Another uh, blue OB peacock breeding colony because that's one of our most popular fish. Looks like we lost juveniles in here, as well as adults. Oops, wrong bucket. Oh well, it's a swap bucket. Storm will get to clean it later. She can. For a country girl, she certainly has a bad gag reflex. She can't take smell of dead stuff, and that's one of the things country girls should get used to because death happens. It certainly has in this. I see a live placostomus in the gutter. Uh, any fish that survive will certainly be uh, cold tolerant. Okay, that is California dragon blood, one of our dragon blood strains. Here's one that died not too long ago. Big sword tail, tuxedo sword, female.
nice colored female dragon bloods. I see, I do see a live female down there. Wild uh, pink convict male, nice hump on him. Couple nice females. Okay. Let's see if I can get to that one over here without falling in. Yeah, I see several live ones down there. Okay, this one doesn't look good. This is Benga Yellow, Alana Cara Benga Yellow. And it looks bad. That breeder male. I think it will take us a couple years to recover from this, and we were just recovering from Harvey, which was about three, almost three and a half years ago. Uh, we still have about 20% of our bats empty because we're just getting production ramped up. Uh, Royal Blue Dolphins, it looks like we lost most of our sale vat, adult sale vat. We, we can keep up to 100 fish this size, and uh, actually 150 fish this size, and uh, 55 because we're running so much well oxygenated water. So we did away with air uh, compressors to uh, blowers to run uh, air into each bat because it really didn't do any good. The real critical thing is water flow, and as long as you and the Blowers used up a lot of uh, energy that we would rather have water pumps running on. This is a pair of pink convicts I'd put over here. The female was really colorful. Meloto, Copidochromus meloto fish we can't raise enough of. Well, the mystery snails are, are uh, feasting. Okay. Another Morii breeding colony. That's a big female. I see, I just saw one of the breeder males dart in there, so, and he was swimming well, so I don't want to stir them up and stress them anymore. Uh, some of our aretum fell down. Go ahead and drag that out later. This is a, it's a really fast growing plant and chews up uh, ammonia, but it grows too fast. We can't use this row right now. I've got to pull all of that out, which is a process we were doing. Okay, this is uh, Pseudotrophius uh, AC, and it looks like we pretty much lost our breeding colony. That's another fish we have trouble raising. Enough of because females are also colorful, so you can sell both sexes. Our wholesale customers tend to buy mostly males, some of them buy pairs. Uh, retail customers split between people stocking tanks and people who want to breed fish. So, people who want to breed fish help us out because they order. A uh, male and a half dozen females. Back before Harvey, when we were at full production, I was actually considering donating female cichlids to the Victoria Zoo. They had a, a group of otters, 
I thought I'd give them fish, live fish to hunt. But then Harvey took care of our overpopulation. Okay, this is Stuart Bronte Milana bicolor. It looks like all the other Stuart Brontes that was a male took a pretty good hit. Most of these breeding colonies have about 50 fish in them, so I'm hopeful that what I'm not taking out right now is, has survived. Okay. This is a big Malawi cichlid. There's one of our males. It's a, a phasic again. Uh, Phosphochromus rostratus gets really big and looks like it took a pretty good hit. Another breeder male. Very interesting that males are blue and green and gold. The females are mostly gold. and spotted. Here you can see some of the lateral spots on that female. Some more blue dragon bloods and one of sail vats. Oops, drawing in the wrong bucket, but it doesn't matter. Another big female. And another big female. Usually we have two to three males and 35 to 50 females in a vat. Okay, this is a Peacock, one of the non-OBs, let's see. Oh no, yeah, actually it's a red, some young female red dragon bloods. And there's a dead juvenile, fry. Looks like one of our young males make it. That's sad. That's a female carrying eggs. That's actually a female, not a young male. So we'll spend probably the next week just doing cleanup. Then we're going to start breaking down each of the breeder vats. This is a uh, uh, red, red OB Cal descended from California dragon bloods. A bunch of young females. I was giving the best couple males a bunch of young females. Right. That was great. Splashed dead fish water in my mouth. Uh, which were most of their, mostly their daughters. Uh, in order to concentrate the colors. And I was also putting in some non-OBs going for a good, trying to develop a good red peacock. As much as possible, I prefer developing colors even if they're commercially available from our fish because I, I know their genetics, I know uh, that they're adapted to our systems, and now if they survive, they're adapted to cold. A 
Okay. This is a blue peacock. There's a. He's alive. Yeah, he's alive, but he has. Look at his eye. There was one over here like that. that I up. Yeah. Both eyes were that way. Yeah, we'll lose a bunch of those. We just set this breeding colony up. Yeah. Not they're so going, they already have fry that size. Let me look. I can't see the date on that one anymore. Okay. This is Metria Klima Grishaki, uh, one of the Ambunas, red top cobalts. Uh, surprisingly popular fish. I don't know why, I'm, it's not one of my favorites. Man, yeah. the video is probably long enough now. Okay. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to see if Stormy drowned herself yet. You want to make any What's that? You want to make any oh, <laughs> yeah, we're just going to continue doing this, getting as many dead fish out as we can. We're going to run a, an ammonia test later today to see if our plants are doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, it's asking them to do a lot. Uh, that's why we're trying to get all these dead fish out. Uh, so we'll be doing this for, I don't know, <laughs> several days, probably the whole week. And then we'll start inventorying the breeding colonies to see whether we have enough fish to continue. Okay, uh, see y'all next time.